morning everyone and welcome back to another art tutorial on my YouTube channel and today we are using some Tea Expert plaster powder but they've actually changed the name to Pure Cure and it is a 10 to 3 ratio so you need 10 parts powder to 3 parts water. Let me just show you what you'll need for this tutorial. I am going to be using some molds that I've got and these are flower molds. I've also got a candle holder mold. You will need some just plain water. I've just got some in here. The kit comes with the selection of colors that you can mix to tint yourself. It also comes with some plastic measuring cups, some stir sticks, and a paintbrush. I've raided my kitchen. I've got one of these measuring cups. I'm also using a little spatula just to scrape out the last bits of plaster. I'm going to be using some metal leaf today as well, so I've got some in copper. So to start with I am just going to colour the inside of each of these flowers and to do that I've made a little selection of green, black and yellow and I've come up with this lovely shade. I'm going to just add a little water to this cup just to water it down again. It, it is water based so you can revive it. And then in the center of each of these, I'm just going to paint a little bit on where I'd like some color. And of course you can do any color that you want. I'm doing green today. So this plaster weighs out using a digital scale. And all you need to do is work out the ratios. So I'll quickly give you a little instruction on how to measure and weigh. It's 10 parts powder, so that would be 100 grams to 30 grams of water. If you wanted double that, it would be 200 grams to 60 grams of water, etc, etc. You could always halve that and do 50 grams of powder to 15 grams of water. So I'm just going to clean up my little work area and just use what I need for now. This step is totally optional, but I'm just going to add a little bit of bling here and there by taking my copper leaf and just pressing it against little areas of my mold. Now, usually when you use gold leaf or metal leaf and you use some sort of plaster, or in this case the Pure Cure, it doesn't take all of it off, so you'll get little glimmers of leaf, but you won't. it won't come off completely. Okay, these are ready now. I'll pull these off to the side. I'm going to be doing a total of 260 grams, so for that I will need 200 grams of the plaster. And I like to use two separate cups when I'm doing this, so that I don't mix up the mix too soon. And then in here I am going to pour 200 grams of the powder. And it comes with its own scoop, so that's handy. So I want 200 grams of this, and you could go a little gentler than I'm doing. I'm getting it everywhere. So there, there's my 200 grams. And then I need, let's tar that, I need 60 grams of water. And there. Pull that off to the side and I've got these two ready. Now if you've got a big batch like this, I'm going to give you a little tip. I go to my hardware store and I get one of these very soft pliable mixing bowls for plaster actually. So for real plaster, for wool plaster. I find them very handy. Then you mix this inside there. And another tip is if you want to mix some colour into it, this would be the best time to do it. Mix it into your water. I'm going to try out a bit of acrylic paint and see if it works. Get my stirring sticks, mix it up in there. And it's not mixing very well. So that is not working. There you go, experiment number one doesn't work. So I'm going to scoop that out because I don't want it to ruin my mixture. And instead, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to mix up a sort of a coral colour. 
and for that I'm going to use red and yellow and remember when you mix it with the powder it does turn a little lighter in color because you're mixing your base color with white let's get a little more yellow in there and again there and then this is the moment to mix it in and you can always add this to the actual plaster once it's mixed but I like to get a little base color going before okay move that to the side a whisk like this all this is very handy too it doesn't it's not sold with a kit but I buy this from the kitchen section of any any supermarket and then it's really easy to do. You simply pour this water into there and mix. Mix it all in. And you can see how concentrated that color is. And I didn't put very much in, but it's given me a lovely coral, a nice light coral color. If you find it gets stuck inside there, just tap it. And you will also find that around the edges there are lumps. So with the stirring stick, prise them out and give it a stir. Oh, that colour's lovely, I love it. It's exactly what I wanted. And I'm just going to once again check there's no lumps hiding on the edges. There isn't. That stick is coming out clean. we're ready to pour. Now this mixture is quite watery so it's going to help with the bubbles, it's also going to help with pouring. If you find that there are one or two there just pop them, you don't want them lurking around. So let's start with this one. Pour gently down and then before you get to the top just give it a little tap. That will get rid of any bubbles that are there. You can also use your paintbrush and just pop them and then I just like to wiggle it around get it into all the little crevices because this is very intricate mold and once I've done that I can then pull right up to the top one done. Just give it a little tap, let some of the bubbles out, move it to the side and we can get on with the next one. And this one is particularly intricate so I may even take my brush and just poke and get it everywhere. And then once that's done, you can fill it up to the top. Okay, give it another tap. If there's a little bubble there, you can just burst them as they're rising. And then the last one. So same thing, pour it in a little bit, maybe three quarters, get your brush, really push down because this middle bit has got lots of intricate areas. And then just turn it around, get it all into the side so it coats. And then we can pour the rest right up to the top. There. Once again, tap, make sure all of the bubbles that are underneath come up to the surface. 
And then if I've got any more left, let's scrape the rest out with this spatula. Waste not, want not. However, you can use these for terrazzo chips, so you can place them on a little bag. Here is an old glove, and you can just lay them on and use up the rest if you need to. But I don't need to here in this case. It's just a demonstration to show you. And then go around and pop any bubbles. The top, this will be the top in any case, so what will happen is we can sand that down if there are any and unsightly bits. And then we need to let this dry for a full half an hour and I'll be back. So while that's curing, gather all of your utensils that you've used and go down to this kitchen sink and then just give it a good rinse. It's best to do this while this is still wet. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be back. And for the two little candle plates, that's to put these flowers on top of. I've got these two molds. This came with the kit, and this is just a mold that I have lying around. And for that, I will need a total of 150 grams. So I'm going to do 115 of the powder and 35 grams of the water. So exactly the same thing, we're just going to mix the water into the cup and because I've got a smaller amount I can use this small measuring cup that comes with the kit. Let's mix it around first with the stick, make sure we get all of those lumps from the bottom first. Then once those lumps have kind of gone, you can get in there with your, with your whisk. And the good thing is it's transparent at the bottom so you can see if there are any lumps there. So far I'm good. So I haven't yet put any gold leaf, or in this case copper leaf, so I'm going to do that now. And as I said, it doesn't really, it doesn't really catch on or stick on, but it does give it a little, a little glimmer here and there. And I will be showing you at the end another trick on how to apply some of this leaf, metal leaf or real gold leaf over the top. Let's pour it in. And again, I like to just pour a little bit here, swill it around, tap any air bubbles on the bottom, and then just fill it up. I also like to pour quite low so that there are no air bubbles being incorporated as it's flowing from the air to the mold. And again, handy spatula, scrape out all the rest. And there, and then we wait another 30 minutes. And once again, I've gone down and quickly washed up and really clean up is so easy when it's wet. So you can tell I've just set these and these ones here are setting up and you can tell how they set up because they go matte on the top. Okay so this has been about 35-40 minutes now I wanted all of these to dry together. You can tell that this is quite warm on the surface so it's probably ready to go. So let's start with unmolding this one. Just peel back gently. Okay, this is the way I do these molds. I jiggle them from right to left. And there, it's released. That is perfect. That is really perfect. I'm very, very happy with that. It's taken all of the little intricate shapes and the bottom bit, all you'll need to do, and I'll show you that later, is sand this down. 
So let's get all the others unmoulded. I love that one. And the green really does look lovely in the middle. Two. And then this one. And this is the most intricate of all of them. So there are slight little bubbles there. That's just my fault because I didn't clean it off properly. But it's still really, really beautiful. And I love the green in the middle. That worked really well. And then the plates, the same thing. And you can see that there are a few flakes there. And the last one, and this particular mould comes with the kit in there. I love just that little glimmer. And the reason I like to do these is because I do like to place them on the top. So of course there's a selection you can do, they match, they look great. And you could just have a little one there. So the kit comes with a selection of uh, abrasive waterproof sandpaper, you've got 120, you've got a 400, this is a very soft one and this is a very abrasive one, but I usually find that just using the 400 is enough and it's got just a slight little lip there so I'm just going to sand it back. It really doesn't need much and it's nice and flat. There. And I'm just going to do a little there. And I'm just doing this dry, but you can do this wet as well. Or just smooth it down. It doesn't have to be completely flat but just as long as there are no sharp edges. And if you've got a couple of bubbles there just sand them down, round them out and that just makes it appear less bubbly. There's one there. But you know these are all homemade so it doesn't have to be perfect. Same for these, I'm just going to flatten that out a bit. Okay, I think that's nice. Doesn't need to be completely flat. And I'm going to be very delicate with this one because this has got lots of sharp edges and thin, tiny edges. And I'm just going to go until it's just flat like that. That's nice. And the last one. And there, if I run my fingers, it's nice and smooth. And that's all you need. And if you wanted to, you could go down to your sink and just rinse this off a bit. Use a little scrubbing brush and it will get rid of all of the excess. Just like that, and then just wipe down the back, and it's good as new. So if you wanted just a little bit more bling somewhere, I might put just a little bit there. I've got some gilding paste, and it is a medium that goes from kind of like a milky color down to a 
transparent color and when it's transparent you can add your gold leaf just want a few speckles here and there not too much and maybe one or two here just for fun let's put one there cover up some of those holes and drape a little bit over the side and then you can apply the gold leaf this will remain a little bit tacky I'm going to use a soft paintbrush and so I can get in there and a few bits here just like that a little bit here and some on the edge And wherever you have that gold sizing glue, that's where this gold leaf will stick to. For my next experiment, I'm going to try some gouache. This is just a cheap supermarket gouache paint set. And I like that it's got different colors, so that might come in useful for when we want to tint without mixing too many colors up. So. I'm going to do, why not, I'll do a little purple one and see how it goes. So these are water-based and I'm going to start off by adding just a little. So I'll do about that much. Tint the water and it mixes in pretty well with the water. I would like it quite strong just to see how much it can take. So I'll do two tiny little blobs, mix them up, and then add this to the pack hook. Well, that's a nice colour. It's quite good, that purple. Get my spatula out to mix everything for me. Outer edges. So that works. Well, I'm pleased with that colour. I'm going to pour it into my mould. And this is also helpful so that you can see if it's dried through. So I'm going to use up the rest here, spread it out, and you can use these for terrazzo chips. Right, it's been half an hour, and this looks like it's fully cured. So I'm pleased with that. Gouache does work. And now it's going to be time to varnish them. And the best way to do this is just to leave this for another hour or so or preferably overnight to completely dry out and then we can varnish it and protect the outer coating. And of course all of these little pieces we could make terrazzo with, so just crush them up and put them in a little bowl and keep them for another time. The two choices you have to varnish these and protect it are just a regular acrylic varnish. I like a matte finish but you can also use a gloss. And there is some wax. This is just wood protective wax and it's um, transparent. So with both of them, I am just, because we are going to use these as room sprays, I just need to protect the backs. So I've already put my little signature on there. And with the first method, which I find the probably the easiest and the quickest to dry, is a little bit of varnish. Now I've put a bit much there, so I can take some and put them on another two or three and I can cover quite a few of them with just this on my brush. You can do one layer, you can do two. It all depends on how much protection you want. These are just going to be room sprays. They're not going to have any water, so cups or any teacups on them or anything. So one coat should do. 
let it dry completely and I'm just going to protect the undersides of these and maybe just the sides. And so here they are, all done. They've been varnished. They've had about a day to dry out completely. And to perfume them, you have a couple of choices. You can use, of course, some essential oils. This is a organic essential oil lavender. You can use just some body spray, or you can use a room spray. This is a home perfumed room spray that you spray on. And all you do is you give it one or two little squirts Put your essential oil on the top and let it go around. It can even go in the tray since we didn't varnish it. And last but not least, my body nesting spray and it works just as well. And these work particularly well in winter if you put them on a radiator and they will just diffuse very gently all of your perfumes. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one and I wish you a good week. Take care everyone. Bye.